Welcome back guys to my channel. Today what I'm going to be talking about is the five players that I want in the Canadian Premier League in the coming years because it would be very interesting to watch them. Before you go on to watch this video, please like the video if you enjoy it at the end of the video. Uh, and please subscribe if you want to see more Canadian soccer content, more Canadian Premier League content from me. So number five is David Edgar. David Edgar is a 32 year old center back who's played uh, for a whole host of teams that make him have a very good pedigree. He's played for teams like Newcastle, Burnley, and Birmingham. He's also played on loan for Swansea City, Huddersfield Town, and Sheffield Town. Then he played for Vancouver Whitecaps, Nashville, and he played uh, for Ottawa Fury, which is his uh, last real major team that he's played for, like a professional team. And then he won on to play for Hartlepool. Um, not sure if I said that right, but I believe they're a non-league team um, in the lower divisions of English football. Uh, and that was on a short-term contract so that he could really get some fitness, probably so that he can continue to get called up uh, by, by the Canadian men's national team manager, John Herdman. When I watched David Edgar play, I found that he wasn't tremendous. I thought he was an okay center back. I wasn't a huge fan of him, but with a player of his pedigree and he's out of a contract, it'd be nice to see players like him get a home in the Canadian Premier League at home. And that would be nice to see for them to bring back players like him who have such a big pedigree and are really looking to kickstart their career. Number four is Dominic Oduro. Dominic Oduro is a 33-year-old Ghanaian MLS veteran. He's played for a whole host of teams in MLS. He's a real journeyman if you look at the teams that he's been. Though right now he's not actually playing in MLS. He's playing in the division below in US soccer. Uh, he's playing for the USL side, Charlotte Independence. Uh, the reason why he's playing for that is he was released at the end of the 2018 season by his uh, previous team, San Jose Earthquakes. But in terms of the MLS teams that he's played for, he's played for FC Dallas, New York Red Bulls, Houston Dynamo, Chicago Fire, Columbus Crew, Toronto FC, and Montreal Impact most recently. So he's played for two of the three Canadian MLS teams. And whenever he would play against Toronto FC for Montreal Impact, he always seemed to score against Toronto FC. Any like Toronto FC fan that consistently watches the games will tell you that whenever they watch the 401 Derby, Oh my gosh, he was such a pain to play against, even though when he played for us, he wasn't the greatest player. Uh, one of the problems, well, one of the good things about Dominic Oduro was he was super pacey. I believe at one point, he was either the fastest person in MLS or one of the fastest uh, people in MLS. Uh, he was super fast. It was really fun to watch how fast he could be, but he was not, his technical ability was not the greatest. And whenever he would get a good chance for Toronto FC, he could like deke around the goalkeeper, use his pace to do that, uh, and his dribbling skills to do that. Like his dribbling skills were okay, uh, but there comes a point when you're going so fast, it's hard to dribble. Uh, but he would go to take that shot and he would just like blast it over the net. He was not good at finishing, uh, but he did have some teams that he played pretty well for and other teams like Toronto FC where he didn't play the greatest for. Montreal Impact was one of the teams where he did play pretty decent for. In terms of other teams that he did perform well for, he did play for Columbus Crew where he scored 13 goals in a season and Chicago Fire where he scored 12 goals in a season. Those are his highest goal tallies in MLS. Uh, I believe the Columbus Crew was in 2013, 13 goals he scored in 2013, and he scored 12 goals in 2011 for Chicago Fire. Uh, though he would be a very interesting player uh, to have, it would be nice to have someone of his character to be in the Canadian Premier League, that would be very fun to watch, and it would be someone, a familiar face, that I could go and watch the Canadian Premier League and get excited for. And in reality, if you look at a 33 year old playing in USL, hoping probably to get to MLS, he's probably not going to achieve that. Uh, the reality being is that players of his age who go down to USL hoping that they'll be able to be signed by an MLS team, that doesn't really happen that often. Number three is Milan Borjan. 
He's the starting goalkeeper for Canada at the moment. He's been the starting goalkeeper for quite a few years now. Uh, I haven't watched too much of him, but whenever I watch a highlight or so, or watch a game, he seems to have very good reflexes, and seems to be a pretty good goalkeeper, so I'd be very excited to watch him in the Canadian Premier League. I'm not sure if he would move uh, very soon, because I'm not sure if the league uh, is up to a standard that he would want to go to. I think he would be one of the star goalkeepers in the league if he came. He would be up there for number one goalkeeper or number two, something like that. Like he's a quite good goalkeeper. Uh, so this might be in a few more years once the league starts to improve a bit more, but he could probably come at this uh, point. Uh, he just would be one of the top players in the league. He currently plays for Red Star Belgrade in Serbia. Number two is Tsubasa Endo. Tsubasa Endo is a 25-year-old Japanese attacking midfielder or winger, whatever you want to call him, playing for Toronto FC. Uh, he's played all. He's played quite a few different positions. Tsubasa Endo has had quite an interesting career. Uh, he was drafted ninth overall in the 2016 MLS Super Draft by Toronto FC, and he kind of impressed for the first uh, bit. Uh, you know, I started liking him. I thought he was a decent prospect for Toronto FC. He wasn't super impressive. He wasn't like rookie of the year uh, contender in my opinion when I watched him, but I wanted Toronto FC to keep him. And then at the end of the 2017 season, after Toronto FC won the 2017 MLS Cup, he was released. Probably a big reason for that being is that he wasn't a Canadian citizen, he wasn't an American citizen because you have to consider that he only, I think he started living in the States, I believe he started living in the States once he got to university there, uh, so he spent like probably a few years in the States and then moved to Canada, so he didn't have that citizenship, so he counted as an international spot on our roster. And you don't want a player who's like 24 or 23 who we're not quite sure if he'll be that next level prospect uh, who we could sell on for quite a bit of money or who we could keep and would be very valuable. You don't want him taking up an international spot. So then he was released at the end of the 2017 season and he couldn't find another team. Uh, probably an MLS team didn't want to pick him up because of that international spot again, but he couldn't also find a USL team until midway through August of 2018, where guess who we signed for in USL? Toronto FC 2. So then he played for Toronto FC 2 midway through the season, and Toronto FC 2 in last season, the 2018 season, was absolutely horrible at the start of the season. They didn't win something like their first 10 games, I can't remember the exact amount, but it was crazy. They were playing super bad. Then they started picking up a few wins, but were still playing quite bad. And then Subasa Endo came, and despite the res team results not being super good, they did improve. He scored in 14 appearances, 8 goals, and was one of the best players, uh, arguably, in the league. He performed absolutely amazing, and USL dominated uh, teams in the league. Uh, and was very good. I think for the first time we got to see uh, what type of player he could become. So then in January of 2019, this year, he ended up getting signed by the Toronto FC second team, I mean by the Toronto FC first team. Uh, so now he's signed to that contract, but he's made no appearances in MLS for Toronto FC. So I I am worrying for him that he won't get many appearances and he'll end up getting released after a second stint with the team. So what could he do if he gets released? He could move to a Canadian Premier League team because I think he could be quite a good player for this league. And there's another point too, um, that if he doesn't get released and if Toronto FC is looking for him to get game time uh, and doesn't want to keep on loaning him out to TFC2, I mean, I don't see a reason why they wouldn't want to, but I mean, say if they want to loan him out to some other team, uh, like TFC2 has enough players, uh, they could loan him out to a team in the Canadian Premier League, and I think he could be one of the star players in the Canadian Premier League, and would be very exciting for me to watch. Uh, I would certainly love to watch whatever team would have him. For number one is certainly the most interesting one on this list. It's Diego Forlan. 
Now, most of you soccer fans know, or football fans, whatever you want to call it, know Diego Forlan. He's, a, he's an Uruguayan forward, uh, viewed as one of the greatest Uruguayan forwards, I mean, one of the greatest Uruguayan players of all time for their men's national team. Uh, and he's 40 years old right now, so he's, you know, nearing the end of his career. Uh, let's put it that way, he's currently out of contract. He's played for the likes of Independiente, Manchester United, Villarreal, Atletico Madrid, and Inter Milan. Uh, I think he played the best. Looking at his stats, he played the best for Villarreal and Atletico Madrid. It sounds like he really made his name there. Uh, lately, nearing the stages, nearing the end of his career, he's played for smaller teams just because I don't think he could play for Manchester United and be dominating at the age of 40. Uh, but he's played for teams like Peñarol, which is a Uruguayan team, one of the bigger Uruguayan teams. Um, and he's played for them, that was a few years ago. That was the team that actually produced him, along with many other great Uruguayan talents. And then he went to play for uh, Cerezo Osaka in Japan. I'm not sure if I said that right, the name. And then he played for Mumbai City of the Indian Super League, and most recently, uh, Kichi of the Hong Kong Premier League. Uh, not too many great teams in the Hong Kong Premier League, so I'm not quite sure the level he's at, but he scored five goals and seven appearances in the Hong Kong Premier League. Obviously, uh, the best league in the world, let's be honest about that. He also scored 36 goals and 112 appearances for the Uruguayan national team. You might be able to tell from how I've described him. I actually haven't really watched him much. I'm not sure if I've ever watched him actually because really the peak of his career was a time when I was pretty young and I wasn't really watching too much soccer on TV. So unfortunately I wasn't able to see much of him. But you know from what I've heard is, I mean if they're calling him one of the best Uruguayan players ever, I mean I would love to see him in the Canadian Premier League even if he is 40. Something interesting about Diego Forlan was that he almost signed for Toronto FC in midway of 2013. I actually remember him uh, being rumored to sign there. I wasn't as big of a Toronto FC fan then, but I was still a fan of them. They were still my favorite team. Um, I just wasn't as into soccer at the time. Uh, so that was quite interesting how he almost moved to MLS. And then apparently his agent knocked on Colorado Rapids' uh, front office door and they said, nope, we're not going to sign you, which is kind of embarrassing for him uh, as he's a player of that stature. And they en ended up signing Kevin Doyle instead. Uh, so he tried to formulate, him and his agent tried to formulate a second um, chance of making it to MLS. And then the most interesting development on this story was that briefly, there was a small rumor that Diego Forlan might have actually might actually sign for a Canadian Premier League ahead of this first season, ahead of this inaugural season for the Canadian Premier League, as it was rumored that he wanted to sign, or at least maybe Valor FC wanted to sign him, uh, but it ended up not working. It was pretty brief. The rumor, uh, maybe they just inquired about him. I'm not quite sure. Uh, just asked what his demands were. I'm not quite sure on the rumor. It was pretty small, but I mean that adds a bit. That's the reason why he's on this list. I wouldn't have put him on if this rumor wouldn't have been formulated, but I'm not sure if this will ever happen. He's 40 years old. I'm not even sure if he's going to sign with another professional team or semi-professional team but it, it would be interesting to see him get involved in the Canadian Premier League in some sort of way, whether it's being a bit of a backup player who plays a few games for a team like Valor FC because they don't think he would be starting at the age of 40. He would add some technical ability, be able to train some of the youngsters, um, or it would be neat if he ended up becoming a staff member in the Canadian Premier League. Maybe tries to start off his managerial career in the, Can in the Canadian Premier League if he's interested in that. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. As I said at the start of this video, please like it if you enjoyed it now. And uh, please subscribe if you want to see more content about the Canadian Premier League, about Canadian soccer. Thank you for watching this video. And until next time, see ya. Woo!